Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video I wanted to actually talk about Nova once again and uh, possibly make a much better simulation than I did the last time where I'm going to try to help you visualize what Nova actually are a little bit more realistically. Now what you're seeing right now is a supernova, so that's not exactly what we're talking about, but I figured we're going to start with something beautiful. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So this is actually one of the simulations in the game, uh, one of the newly added simulations where Sun goes supernova and creates this unusually beautiful red supernova. Now all of this is not particularly realistic because first of all our Sun is not going to go supernova and we can erase this. And second of all, uh, well we're not going to be talking about supernova because these are a lot more powerful and a lot more uh, energetic. We're going to be talking about Nova and we're going to go back to the idea of binary systems where we're going to have the largest possible star that we know of, known as UIS Qtai, which is essentially large enough to cover uh, the almost the entire solar system in our case. So if I were to actually go under the solar system here and place UIS Qtai in the middle, you'd see how big it is. It actually goes almost as far as Saturn, definitely covers Jupiter. And this is what would happen here and a lot of the uh, planets would basically kind of get destroyed. This is the end of the solar system. Anyway, we're getting distracted here. Let's actually go back to the... Oh, wow, this is so beautiful. Uh, let's go back to the original uh, simulation here. And so we're going to place UIS Qtai. And around it, we're going to place uh, our famous um, white dwarf known as Sirius B. This is the closest white dwarf to us. So this is essentially how all of the Nova are made in our galaxy, in our universe, or I guess the majority of Nova are made this way. I'm sure there's some other technique that we're not aware of yet. So when a white dwarf starts orbiting uh, in a binary system and it orbits uh, some kind of a giant star, like for example UIS Qtai, or even something that not as large as this, but something much, much, much less dense than the actual white dwarf, what starts happening is that the actual star will begin to lose some of its mass and most of this mass will actually start transferring to the white dwarf. Now, it's not really happening here because I think the... I think UIS Qtai is a little bit too gigantic for the simulation to work, so we might have to go a little bit smaller. And I also accidentally caused a supernova yet, once again. So we might actually have to settle for our old friend Alphard, which actually did work last time I used it. So let's just do that instead. We're going to select Alphard and place Series B orbiting around it. And you'll see that Alphard will start losing some of its mass right away. And there, there goes the first fragment. And so as it loses mass, uh, a lot of the stuff will actually start accumulating around Series B and begin orbiting around it. So there is our material that uh, was captured from this beautiful star and it's now orbiting around Series B. Now, as it accumulates around Series B, this is when things get really interesting. So at some point, it will become so hot and so, so dense that it will actually initiate um, a nuclear reaction, as I mentioned in the previous video. Uh, but unfortunately, I wasn't really able to recreate this nuclear reaction very well uh, because I didn't really, or I guess I totally forgot about a really cool function here known as the uh, pulse button. So we're going to actually simulate Nova a little bit better this time. And we're going to simulate this using the uh, pulse button. So I'm going to go under pulse here and select, uh, let's just select a sphere, I guess. There's going to be 10,000 particles here and they're going to be moving at a velocity that's uh, just enough for us to escape the surface of Sirius B. Now, normally a supernova, or sorry, not, not a supernova, but a nova particle would move at a speed of around 1,000 kilometers per second. Now, if I were to initiate this right here, if I were to initiate a pulse, Right now, what would happen is most of the particles would not be able to escape. They would actually fall back down to uh, the surface of the white dwarf because they're not reaching, as you can see, they're not reaching the escape velocity. So even with 3000 kilometers per second, they're not going to be able to escape. They kind of get stuck and absorbed back into the white dwarf. And there's actually them appearing on the surface. So that looks pretty awesome, actually. Kind of uh, the effect I was going for with my um, Nova simulation. So essentially, the, all of these particles are, have now collided with the surface. Now, let's just say that we've just about reached the, uh, tem uh, the temperature threshold. So now we have the 20 million degrees here. It's about to initiate the nuclear reaction. It's already happening on the surface. And this is when we can increase the pulse to 
uh, a thousand kilometers per second over the escape velocity. So to escape the surface of this white dwarf, you have to have the escape velocity of 8,000 kilometers per second. That's very, 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 fa very fast. We're going to have to go with 9,000. So this is how fast our pulse will be moving. And we're going to slow down this a little bit more and launch the pulse right now. So this is the Nova. This is basically how I wanted to portray the Nova to you by using this really cool pulse feature. And this is essentially what would happen here. So it's not a supernova. It's not an explosion that basically destroys everything in this particular solar system. But it is a relatively large uh, sort of explosion of material that will be moving really, really, really fast and uh, will at some point increase the total brightness of the star up to about uh, 8 to 12 times. So it's going to become much, much, much brighter. So let's see how it goes. Uh, some of these particles might actually collide with Alphard. But I think most of them will be able to actually escape. And it looks like uh, we're just going to wait a little bit more and see um, what happens to these particles as they escape Series B. And as you can see, a lot of them are actually colliding with Alpha. So there's a bit of an explosion going on on Alpha right now. Uh, so a lot of this material will return back to Alpha and possibly then get uh, once again sucked off by Series B. So there's a bit of a recycling going on there. But many of these particles will actually escape. And interestingly, it's not actually that much mass. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's only about one uh, ten thousandth. So basically, a, a very, very small percentage of the total mass of the star. So it's not a lot of stuff, but it does make a big difference in terms of the brightness. So this uh, will actually increase the total brightness of the star quite dramatically. So we'll actually be able to see it much better from, um, from our planet Earth. Now, this is actually what gave Nova its name, because... Back in the days, people saw these stars that appeared once in a while and, and then disappeared, and they thought these are new stars. Uh, there's actually um, at least 10 known uh, stars that have recurring nova, that where nova actually happened several times. And the most recent nova we've observed, I believe, was actually in 2014 from a star known as V745 Scorpii. Uh, some of the more popular nova that you can actually find pictures of, of uh, are, well, you see them on the screen right now. This is T Corona Borealis. It's a very famous nova. And it actually uh, went nova back in 1866 and once again in 1946. And there's another one known as um, T Pyxitis, which uh, went nova uh, something like six times. First time was back in 1890, and then the last time was in 2011. Now, when I say first time, I mean, this is the first time we actually saw the Nova. It obviously happened many, many, many times, but we started observing them and uh, analyzing them only in um, late 19th century. So this is the first time we actually started realizing that there's something called Nova. So this is what my pulse looks like now. It's uh, basically expanding slowly and it's essentially representing the explosion of matter uh, due to the um, nuclear reaction that occurred on the surface of the White Dwarf Series B. Now, Several years will pass, up to like a decade, and uh, as it accumulates more and more matter, another pulse will occur. So let's actually initiate a second pulse. And so this is the second pulse, and there it comes. And so now we have two pulses, and basically, this is uh, what we've observed uh, in the night sky as well. We've observed uh, some unusual clouds uh, coming off some stars where you have one little cloud and another one inside. So this is, this is something that we call recurring nova. And some of them actually happen very fast and some of them take uh, many, many years to, to do this again. Now, uh, mo modern scientists actually think that uh, almost every binary system, if not every binary system that has a white dwarf, is actually a, a nova. They, they think that nova are possible, uh, possible in every single system that has a white dwarf in it, but uh, just some of them are really, really slow. So maybe even Series B one day will go nova and we might be able to see it. Uh, but uh, because it's so far away from its main star, it might actually take a very long time. Now, we've also actually observed these in other galaxies, specifically uh, Andromeda Galaxy, and we've seen at least a dozen of these um, in Andromeda, so meaning that, uh, obviously, this is a universal sort of a effect that happens in other galaxies as well. But in our galaxy, we've seen this at least 53 times already, and we'll probably see it a lot more as we become better at observing the night sky. And just in general, um, these nova can actually be uh, divided into four different types. Uh, there's something called fast nova, which basically becomes very bright and then within 100 days uh, sort of dims again to the original brightness. There's something called slow nova, which usually takes more than 150 days to, uh, to essentially uh, become dim. 
there's a very slow nova, which usually means that it will stay relatively bright for up to a decade, so basically several years. And the coolest one of them is what I have right here. These are the recurring nova, which is basically when they have two or more outbursts um, every 10 to 80 years. And so essentially what a recurring nova would be, let's actually maybe start a new simulation because this is getting a little bit too slow. So a recurring nova would be something like this. So let's actually do this again. Pulse once. Uh, zoom out a little bit. Pulse twice. And pulse three times. So this is a recurring nova. It's basically a nova that happens over and over again with a specific period or a somewhat um, similar period in between them. So uh, this might be several years, this might be several decades, but definitely has to be under 80 years for it to qualify as a recurring nova. Well, so that's all I wanted to basically show you in this particular video. Think of this as a part two of the Nova explanation, where I kind of didn't really realize I could have done this with a pulse function, which is something that I haven't really used much before. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos or learning through video games. And uh, definitely consider supporting this ch channel on Patreon as well. I'll see you in the next video. Game later. And as always, bye-bye. And before we finish this video, what I wanted to do is also possibly click the explode button. So let's maybe erase these particles and go into the explode -a jiggy And boom. All right. Now this is a supernova. A very different concept altogether.